one of the final state labs that we did was Beaks of Finches. To kind of jog your memory on what we did with Beaks of Finches, here's an overview of the lab. The first thing we did was each group got a tool. That tool was supposed to represent a beak. Now the tool that they got might have been tweezers, pliers, chopsticks, test tube holder, or beaker holder. Each one of these represented an adaptation or a characteristic that the finch that you represented had. The next thing we had to do was we had to pick up seeds. Your task was to pick up as many seeds as you could in the time given. The goal was to at least get 13 seeds. If you weren't able to get 13 seeds, then you died off, meaning that your particular finch was no longer able to survive and reproduce. So from a natural selection standpoint, you were not the best fit, and therefore your genes were not passed on to the next generation. If you remember, thinking back to those tools, which tool was the best to use and what advantage did that tool have? Now, they did ask a question very similar to this on a recent region. And you would actually have to be, be able to identify one of the tools that our class had used and why it was good. For example, you could say that the tweezer was good because it had a very pointed tip which allowed you to precisely pick up the seeds. Why do these finches have different beak adaptations? If I look at each one of those finches, what I notice is that their beaks are all different sizes and different shapes. Now, the size and the shape of their beak is going to enable them to eat different types of food. Let's look at the one on the left, the warbler finch. The warbler finch is an insect eater and it feeds in trees. Note that it has a tiny pointy beak. That's probably a good beak so that it gets into the nooks and crannies of the trees where the insects live. Now if you look at the vegetarian finch, which is all the way to the right, you'll notice it has a much thicker beak and it's described with a crushing bill. Now that would be a good characteristic for a bird that eats seeds, so that it can actually go and crack them open. And if you look, that is what the vegetarian finch eats. Now why are there these different types of beaks and bills on the different types of finches? Well, that has to do with variation. Each one of them is different due to a variation. Now, what causes variation? The big one that we're going to focus on is a mutation. A mutation is the change in the genetic code. Remember those letters, A, T, C, and G? Well, those letters, they sometimes change, usually during DNA replication. And that change enables slight modifications in the beak over hundreds if not thousands of years. And natural selection has allowed for the one with the best trait to survive. So the question is why are there these four different types? Well, the reason why there are four different types of beaks is because each one is in a slightly different environment. Remember, two organisms can't occupy the same niche. So it's important that each one of these has a very, very specific beak for the specific type of food that they are going to be eating. And this all happened randomly because of a mutation. Now you do need to know how to use the finch wheel. This should look familiar from the actual test. If you look in the center part, which is highlighted green, you'll note that that refers to the food that the finch is going to be eating. If you look in the section that is highlighted now in yellow, that refers to the type of beak that the finch has. It's very, very important that you know how to read this because there will be a graphic like this on the test. Using the finch wheel, let's try to do some practice here. Which finch would be hardest to eat? Explain your answer. Now take a minute and try to identify the types of finches that would eat hard to eat. And then explain why you think that would be the case. What we're doing is we want to look at the different types of beak. You can either have an edge crushing beak, you could have a biting tip or a probing tip. If you're eating hard seeds, you probably want something that is edge crushing. That would mean that all of the ground finches could potentially eat hard seeds. Look at this section highlighted in yellow. Additionally, it says explain your answer. Well, that's really because they have the best adaptation or the best adapted beak in order to eat those types of seeds. 
crushing bill will be able to easily break them apart. The next one says, list two finches that would compete. Explain your reasoning. Take a minute and try to identify two different types of finches that you think would compete for the same food. Now, there are several different answer choices that you could have for this. For me, I picked the woodpecker finch and the tree finch. If you look at what the woodpecker finch and the tree finch eat, they all eat the same exact type of food, which is mainly animal food. Again, make sure you understand how to read the diagram. You could have potentially picked all ground finches with compete because they all eat the same exact type of food as well. To analyze an evolutionary tree, you want to look at points of intersection. Note on the right hand side, they give you where the past and where the present is. The one all the way at the bottom represents the common ancestor for all the organisms. Looking at this chart, which two would you say are most closely related? If you pick W and Z, then you'd be correct. And the reason for that is that if we were to look at where they intersect, they have the most recent common ancestor. The area highlighted in green is a common ancestor. Yellow is also a common ancestor, but it's actually a more distant common ancestor for X and Y. So while X and Y are related, they're not as closely related as Z and W. The closer the point of intersection, the more closely related two organisms are. Therefore, Z and W are more closely related than X and Z.